Welcome, travelers, to my realm of nightmares. Allow me to be your personal assistant. Come in, take a seat, get comfortable. For when you step into my realm, there's no stepping out. Over the past three months, some very weird and frankly terrifying things have happened to me. I am writing this diary or log of events tonight for fear that after I do what I plan to do, I may never come home. I want this to be proof, or maybe some clue as to what has happened to me if someone finds this. If I didn't make it back, and you are reading this right now, wondering where I am, please, for your own good, do not come looking for me. But before I get ahead of myself, I should start at the beginning where my life took an eventful and horrifying turn for the worst. Entry 1. A Stroll in the Woods Hello, my name is Connor, and I'm an insomniac. I have been for as long as I can remember. In the grand scheme of things, it is horrible. It really is. But I do enjoy some things. I like to try my best to see the silver lining. For instance, my nighttime walks in the woods near my house. I live in the Scottish Highlands in a small town called Avimore. It has a population of just over 3,000 and a smack bang in the middle of nowhere, although it's very popular for tourists and skiing holidays. There isn't much, but it is nice and quiet, and I love it, especially for the dark, dark nights. I love looking at the sky and being able to see everything clearly, and of course, the Aurora Borealis is very frequent this far north. Most nights, when I can't sleep, I like to go out and walk. I live in the more northern area of the town, so literally a 5-10 to 10 minute walk from my front porch, there is seemingly endless forestry and fields as far as the eye can see. It's always so peaceful and relaxing. So, about a 15-20 or 20 minute walk from my house, there is a caravan and camping park called Oakwood. Sometimes I make the 3 or 4 minute drive and park there instead, so I can miss out on the town part of the walk, just in case I run to anyone. I like my walks to be lonely. I don't have the time nor the inclination to talk to a drunk neighbor returning home from the local pub. That being said, this is where my current favorite trail begins. It's not a long walk. It really could be done, keeping to the trails in about 25 minutes. But I like to wander in and out of the tree line and through some of the thick woods. It usually takes me about 45 minutes as I take in the surroundings. The calm of the forest the rustling of the gentle breeze through the leaves, the moonlight bobbing in and out of sight as it dances through the treetops to light the way for me, and sometimes those gaps in the tree give us way to the most incredible greens, purples, and reds gliding across the sky so elegantly like the brush of an artist painting the most incredible scenery in the night sky. The trail then opens out at the end of a beautiful lake called Avilokan, I love to sit on the bank and watch the light from the sky roll across the surface of the lake and listen to the water gently tumbling onto the shore while I just sit in peace and collect my thoughts. Usually, I sit there for maybe an hour. Sometimes I'll walk around the lake and skip stones or just lie on the cool soft grass and stare back in time at the stars and galaxies that fill the night before heading back the way I came. I don't do this every night. There are other great trails too, and other things I like to do with my spare nights when I can't get much sleep. I have many stories to share, but for this entry, I'd like to tell you about something that happened to me on the very walk I love so much. This is where it all started. Usually between 1 and 2 a.m., I wake up. The first thing I notice is that it's pitch black outside, and how quiet everything is or isn't weather dependent. Then, I turn to check the time on my phone knowing exactly what to expect, but ever hopeful that one day it will just say 5.33 a.m. or 6.21 a.m., anything slightly more normal time to wake up. I awoke and looked out the window. 
It was quiet this night, dark, early winter, and a little cold out, but nothing more than I could handle on a daily basis. I checked my phone, 1.08 a.m. I lay under my covers with my eyes closed for about 20 minutes, failing miserably at getting back to sleep. At this point, I had begun to hear a slow, whispering breeze on the other side of my window. It was so calming and inviting, I knew I was walking tonight. I quickly set up and began picking up my clothes off the floor and got dressed. I walked down my hallway and opened the door. I shut it again instantly. A jacket. It was colder than I had expected. I walked to the back of my hallway and got my big hiking jacket. It was a good warm one. I stuck a beanie hat on and made my way into the garden. It was a nice fresh night. The moon was fat and bright over me and a snow icy breeze caressed my cheek. I hopped in my car and backed out of the drive. The streets seemed to be dead, but it wasn't a chance I was willing to take tonight. I've come across people before, and it always somewhat spoils the atmosphere. A drunken neighbor or friend on their way home, talking shit for like 30 minutes, while I politely stand there and listen, secretly regretting ever leaving the house. Tonight, I would drive. I drove up to the entrance of Oakwood and parked my car. I took some cigarettes, a lighter, my phone, and a bottle of water. There was a small serrated sports knife in my car, but I've never actually taken it with me before. Never had to, and tonight was no exception. As I got out of the car, I felt the fresh air hit my lungs. There were a few voices coming from the camping area, but they would be out of earshot soon enough. Aside from that, the only noise was the breeze rustling the bushes and trees. Since I can't park inside the grounds, and the best trails actually set off from inside the park, you can park up near the entrance and walk through. From here, you walk north and come to a trail and set off up there. You are immediately flanked by woods on both sides as you leave the campgrounds, and it is this trail that leads directly to the lake. The trees are not very thick near the beginning, so around the first five minutes into the walk, I normally stick to the trail. Nothing out of the ordinary. There's actually quite a lot to explore around this part. There are a number of little clearances in the thick parts of the woods. I actually had to find them on Google Maps because you can't see them from the trail. There are very few paths leading to them. I like to approach them as the woods get thicker and the sky disappears. To then burst through the tree line and be bathed in the moonlight. The sky seems so small when you look up from the middle of a clearing in the woods. It's something you really have to experience for yourself. The best ones are in the woods to the left. To the right, there's actually not very much, and it's only a short distance through a road ahead. I still wander through that way too, which is where I was when I heard a noise behind me. It sounded like something fell into a pile of leaves. I stopped in my tracks. I waited, being as quiet as I could. It's not uncommon for things to fall out of trees, or even to hear twigs snap or rustling now and again from some animal or whatever. But something about this just struck me, like it felt as if there was just something not right about it. I kept looking around, being as quiet and still as I could. It was extremely dark, so I had the feeling that, unlikely as it was, if it was a person, I couldn't see them, so I was confident that they couldn't see me. I waited a few minutes, maybe five, before I felt comfortable taking another step. There were no other sounds out. So, I just chalked it up to my sleep-deprived imagination. I made my way from the trail again. I knew I was almost at the clearing in the woods at the other side, so I wanted to head over to that area. Now, I want to mention here that in about 7 or 8 years of walking at night, not only this trail, but multiple woods and trails near my town, at this time of night, I have never once ran into another person outside of town but fuck me, as I approached the trail, just before I revealed myself to the night sky, there's a fucking guy walking down the opposite way, like away from the lake towards the campgrounds. I stopped and crouched down and just observed him, feeling safe that he hadn't seemed to notice me and I was obscured by three layers of trees. He walked calmly and without hesitation, as he knew this area as well as I did, but as he got closer, I knew I'd never seen this man before. His face was gaunt and expressionless. His clothes looked a little rough, but he was dressed pretty smart. 
he was wearing a suit that hadn't been taken care of in years. He walked right past me, looking nowhere but straight forward. I didn't make a sound. I just watched. Honestly, I was a bit scared. But we were only about 15 minutes from the campsite. But maybe he was staying there and decided to go for a 2 a.m. walk in a battered old suit alone. It's the only explanation I could think of, to be honest. Whatever the reason, I did not want to come face to face with this fucking random guy I've never seen before at 2 a.m. in the woods. I knew that much. I waited until he was pretty much completely out of sight, and I hesitantly skipped over to the other side, making sure I held up for a few minutes when I got there to see if he had either noticed me or turned back or anything. He didn't, thankfully, but it still creeped the hell out of me. I turned back to the direction of the lake, taking myself through the woods. I was almost at the first clearing. I like to call it Spider. It's kind of almost circular shape, with small trails leading off its edges, in all directions. Kind of like legs. I don't know. I thought it was a cool name. I could see the tree line approaching, and couldn't wait to get a view of the sky from it. I try to pick up the pace a little bit, but the woods get quite thick as you get closer, so it's not easy. There was dead silence. The only sound was the crunching of leaves and twigs under my boots. Even the breeze had died. It was actually quite eerie, but in a way, I kind of liked that. I could feel the adrenaline beginning to pump through my veins. As I set foot on the soft grass of the spider clearing, there was now absolutely no sound. No breeze, no leaves, or twigs, no animals or critters, only deafening silence. As I took a few more steps towards the middle, the moon wasn't in exactly the right place to shine in and light up the area as it sometimes does. So it was dark, very dark. I could still see to some extent. There was light spilling in from the edges, but not much. Like I could see the tree lines all around me, but it wasn't such that I could make out individual trees. I could only recognize it as a dark wall surrounding the clearing. I craned my neck to look directly upwards at the sky. The stars shone so brightly as they seemed to float inside the most beautiful deep blue and purple ocean in the sky, with a smoky cloud-like haze forming behind them, as if it was about to swallow them all whole. I could honestly stare at it forever. Excuse me? I literally jumped back and let out a gasp of terror, as I saw a pale-faced, frail old man standing in front of me. Excuse me, sir? He repeated in his high-pitched, shaky voice. I stared at the frail man, unable to say a word. His white, crooked face seemed to emanate its own light, as did his whitish, wrinkled hands. The rest of his body was as dark as the tree line on the other side. It was almost as if it was swallowing any available light that met it. I just stared in disbelief. What was I seeing? Was I hallucinating? Excuse me, young man, the man's shaky voice repeated. As he took a step forward, I took a step back. Who are you? I inquired, fear evident in my tone. I was hoping you could help me, please? The old man grumbled as he took another wildly step forward. I took another step back. I, I, I'm sorry, mister. I really need to get going. I said as I took another step back towards the trees. Son, I'm lost and cold. I need to find my way back to my wife. Her name is Loretta. Have you seen her? I need to find her. She's out here somewhere. Look, mister, I haven't seen any Loretta or anybody around here at all. It's 3 a.m. There's nobody back here. We're in the woods. I stopped for a second. Wait, are you from the campground at Oakwood? Campground? He replied. Yes, the camping ground just back there. I turned my head towards the direction of Oakwood. There's a trail. It's only about 15 to 20 minutes walk. Bah. As I turned my head back to face the old man, you would not believe what I saw. I couldn't even believe in my own sanity. It couldn't be. It was impossible. As I turned back around, I saw nothing. The old man was gone. Like, completely gone. Nowhere in the clearing to be seen at all. I must have been hallucinating. It had to be that. 
There's no other explanation. But I don't feel weird in any way, or sleep deprived, or even tired. Plus, it was so real, there was no way it was a hallucination. But how could that be possible? Nothing like this had ever happened to me before. I was too scared to move. I dropped to my knees. My legs had turned weak as sheer terror took over me. After what I had just witnessed, I tried to reason with myself. It had to be my imagination. That or the old man somehow ran into the darkness. It was only a few seconds my gaze had left him, so it didn't seem possible. But there just had to be some kind of explanation. I slowly got back to my feet, looking all around, desperately trying to see anything. I couldn't decide, maybe I'll stick to the main trails, stay out of the woods until I get to the lake, and also, the trails get me there faster. I could see a pale green tint in the sky. The aurora had come tonight, and I didn't want to miss it. As I walked back through the tree line, heading for the trail, I just had a feeling there were eyes on me from all directions. At some point, I actually thought I could see eyes through the trees. Several eyes, glowing white, but only for a split second. Some of them I thought I saw were red. That creeped me out, but they were just in my periphery. And when I turned around to check, there was always nothing there. I just wanted to get to the trail as fast as possible. I made it pretty quick, aside from stumbling on a few rocks and fallen branches. The trail opened up in front of me, and I was less than 10 minutes from the lake. I picked up a pace. I felt like if I made it there, I could just forget about all the weird stuff and watch the sky, relax, and take the fastest route back to my car. A very long and brisk five minute walk later, I had the lake in my sights. I could see the moonlight bouncing off the surface, shimmering like a beacon of white flame. I broke into a jog and made it there in a minute or two, and the breeze had picked up again and I could hear the rustling of the leaves along with the soothed lapping of water against the bank. The aura was lighting up the sky in deep shades of purple with a green rim and stars were bursting through like a huge city in the sky. I could already feel my troubles slipping away as I slowly walked to the edge of the water. I went down to pick up a stone from the soft damp grass. I skipped it across the surface leaving ripples trailing behind that distorted all the colors of the night sky and all manners of wonderful patterns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight skips and the stone was quickly swallowed by the lake. I walked around slowly, letting the surroundings sink into my body and mind. I let out a huge sigh of relief and bent down to pick up another stone. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and gone. I watched the ripples in the water spread out like the lake was opening up into a glistening portal in the sky. I began to walk around the bank, taking in the fresh air, every couple of minutes stopping, feeling the air on my face, and enjoying the calm. About ten minutes later, I was just about to head back when I noticed something in the water. It was just up ahead, a kind of dark mass. It looked like maybe a suitcase covered in reeds and mud. I found myself getting closer, not letting it out of my sight, as it bobbed freely and smoothly along the surface, nearing the edge. As I got closer, it started to take on a more recognizable form. As I saw at one end of the mass was hair. It was the back of someone's head. A person was floating face down in this freezing lake. Their matted black hair tangled with dirt and slimy seaweed, running all across their back, intertwining. Their clothes seemed like they used to be either a pale yellow or green, now dark and mucky, stained with a deep red near the neck. As disrespectful as this might sound, I had to grab the person by the hair to drag them closer. It was as far as I could reach, although it was either that or leave them there. The long, slippery hair was sliding between my fingers as I struggled to grip it, but I managed to pull them close enough to get my hands under their arms and drug them onto the land. I pulled the body about 10 feet from the water. It wasn't easy. I flipped the poor soul over and discovered a bloated face with peeling skin. There was horrifying little critters crawling from orifice to orifice and scurrying all over their face and eyes. I studied the body. I saw it was a pale green dress, kind of like some old-fashioned diner waitress. 
I almost threw up when I saw the huge, deep, clean wound across the neck. Bloodless, but the inside of the throat was completely exposed and also cut through. The skull appeared dented, smashed into some blunt object, and I began to notice stab wounds all over the body. The legs, the stomach, the face, the chest, the chest. I noticed a name tag on the chest. I ran my thumb across the cold metal and revealed the name Loretta. I jumped up. I felt sick. I felt like I was about to have a panic attack. Loretta. I kept seeing that name tag in my mind's eye. I heard the skipping sound again. I stopped. I stared as the ripples opened up again as a stone skipped all the way towards me. I could feel my stomach turn as it skipped right up and jumped out of the water and landed at my feet. There was a lump in my throat. I picked it up and stared intently at it. My heart sank as the familiar feeling of dread consumed me. A whistle echoed from the other side of the lake. The light was much better here thanks to the unobstructed moon and I looked up across the lake. There he was. The old man. His chalk white face was unmistakable but he was taller, much taller and he stared at me with his glowing reddish eyes smiling a toothy grin. He jumped in the water and disappeared beneath the surface. I started shaking in fear. My legs couldn't move. I wanted to bolt as fast as I could, but I was frozen. I heard a soft brush of grass behind me. Before I could turn around, I felt sick, cold, wet hands wrap around my face, covering my mouth. The smell was unbearable, and it felt like the decomposing flesh was seeping into my mouth as it tried to scream, but I was able to turn my head just enough to see Loretta. Her dead eyes stared right through me, as if I didn't exist. She made no sound, and her grip tightened around my face. I looked forward to see the old man's head sticking out of the water just ten feet away. He was staring right at me, smiling, and slowly rising above the surface. As he pulled himself from the water, he gave a light but menacing laugh. <laughs> Excuse me, could you help find my wife? He growled as he laughed behind his words like a maniac. I was helpless. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I had to try and get out of there any way I could. I fought Loretta's grip, but she was unexpectedly strong. I tried kicking her behind me, but to no avail. Eventually, I let my legs give way completely. I dropped straight down like dead weight to my ass and was able to slip through her watery grasp. As she clambered to grab me again, I was able to roll to my side and jump up as fast as I could. The old guy stopped and stared as I ran back into the woods. Loretta stared too. Her black and puffy eyes seemed to train on my very being with laser precision as her dead gaze pierced my soul. I wasn't slowing down for fucking anything. I ran as fast as I could, never looking back. A fog began to descend on the forest as the air began to change. It became more difficult to see where I was going with every passing second. As I ran, something barged into me, or I barged into something. It was a body, hanging from a tree, swinging violently as I screamed and got back to my feet. I spurred once again through the trees, where I saw more bodies everywhere I looked, swinging from the trees in the fog. I couldn't stop. I had to run through. Some of them made a grab for my hair and my jacket. I was crying now. My legs were getting weaker and I could feel my body giving up. Help! I screamed out in vain as my legs began to wobble. Someone, please help! I broke through the trees and collapsed. I was on the trail. The fog was still getting thicker, but I knew I could make it back easier this way. When I saw a shadow slowly emerge through the cloud, I just lay on my front sobbing. My legs had given up, and there was no fight left in me. And it was then I knew I was probably going to die. Are you okay? said an unfamiliar voice. I saw it glanced over, and I couldn't believe my eyes. It was the guy from earlier I saw walking around the trail. Still in his beautiful old shitty suit, the beautiful fucking weird bastard was back, and he was here to save me. I thanked all the gods I didn't believe in, and I sobbed even more. Please help! Please! I'm being chased! I'm being hunted! <sighs> hunted! The man said, Let me help you up. Sit over here on this stump and catch your breath, and then maybe we can get you back down to Oakwood. 
once you've got your energy back. I couldn't believe my luck. I couldn't believe what had happened. And I was so happy I was safe. I actually felt safe. I sat on the old tree stump and my legs were getting the feeling and it let my energy replenish. What do you mean you're being hunted? And by who? Or by what? The man asked. It's, it's, it's a long story. You would never believe it anyway. I'm, I'm not sure if I even do. <laughs> you're welcome to try me. I will keep an open mind. He reassured me, smiling warmly. Honestly, I don't even know where to begin. I said, as I stretched my legs to keep it from cramping, I whimpered in pain. Careful there, buddy. Just let yourself relax. You're obviously very tense. If you have just went through a traumatic experience, I'll stay here with you. Don't worry, however long it takes. I started to feel a whole lot better. He interrupted the quiet once again. So, what actually happened? And I'm confused as to why you wouldn't believe yourself. If it just happened to you moments ago, he asked. Because it's just so far-fetched, I can't even trust my own mind anymore. I hesitantly replied, kicking my legs out again, finally able to feel something in them. Well, he said, putting his hand on the back of my neck. Sometimes things happen that are so out of this world, most people won't even believe a single word until it's staring them right in the face. He began to growl as I felt his fingers elongate and tighten around my neck. I turned my head and I was face to face with the most grotesque, evil looking pale face with glowing deep red eyes of the hottest flame. His hot, arid breath almost choked me. He began laughing maniacally and threw me to the ground and stood up. He's about eight feet in height and slim. His long pointed fingers danced around like a kid in a sweet shop picking out his favorite candy. His crooked legs began to stomp towards me. The adrenaline burst my body like a shotgun shell and jumped so fast to my feet and sprinting like I had never before, screaming like a fucking lunatic the whole way, all the time hearing that horrible laughter like it was right by my ear. I almost burst through my car door as I made it back. I fumbled for my keys and jumped in, grabbed my knife, and started the car. My wheels screeched as I took off at breakneck speed. I couldn't fucking get home fast enough. I skidded the car to a halt in my drive and legged it into the house. I couldn't remember if I closed the car door. I switched on every light and sat in the middle of my lounge with my knife in hand and waited. I sat in total silence for over an hour. Every little noise, every creak, and general house noise that wasn't my thumping heartbeat sent a cold shiver down my spine. Only after I managed to calm down did I feel more comfortable moving from my spot. I could finally feel the tiredness beginning to take over. It was around 5.30 a.m. Maybe it was safe to go and try to get some sleep. My body ached and I was mentally and physically exhausted. I felt battered and bruised. I left every light on and cautiously walked to my room. I made sure every window and every door was locked and I laid in bed. Still on the edge, but feeling so tired, the simple darkness outside my window struck fear into me. I didn't want to look, so I turned away from it. I would probably end up waiting until the sun came up before I could sleep. Although my eyes were really heavy, I couldn't decide if I was too scared or if it was even safe to sleep. As I lay in bed under my covers, my mind raced. My eyes were opening and closing. My blinks got longer compared to earlier. I did feel a little better, but it didn't take away from the absolute terror that enveloped my every thought. My eyes were getting really, really heavy now. I knew the time was coming where I would have to give up fighting sleep and just let it take over. Feeling so sleepy, I thought I fell asleep for a minute or two, but I couldn't be sure. It was time for me to drift off. My brain was shutting down from exhaustion. I can't be 100% sure because I was on the threshold of dreams and reality. But I swear this felt as real as everything that had happened earlier. Just before my mind switched off, I heard something inside my room that still haunts me to this very moment. After everything that happened and will stay with me for the rest of my life, Excuse me? A shaky voice inquired. My eyes shot open.
Tonight's story is part one of eight from a series called Tales from an Insomniac, written by Reggae Junkie. If you enjoyed this, please go check him out. His links to his Reddit, as well as all of his other social medias, will be in the description below. Please check him out, let him know PA sent you. Hey, did you have merch? Oh, well, I do. Crazy, right? And if you'd like to walk around representing my realm and gaining new travelers, the links to my merch store, as well as all of my other social medias, will be in the description below. As always, I'd like to say a special thank you to all my lovely Patreons. 242 Reads Rando Calrissian Seraphine the Midnight Bard Creepy Clown Girl Mia Mina Hair Raising Narratives Spooky Boo Scary Story Time Lichen Trucker and Pimp Demon. If you'd like to join these lovely travelers by the light of my fire, you can do so by becoming a Patreon as well. Just remember, the support is always appreciated, but it's never expected. Please, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and ding that bell if you're new, as it will really help push this video out into the algorithm and helps the channel grow. But as always, travelers, once you step into my realm, there's no stepping out.